Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I just wanted it to be real casual. I'm just sitting on my couch. Um, I just wanted to tell you what all has went on with our infertility journey. Um, today actually marks a year and a half of going through treatments. So last April on the 4th is when we had our first appointment to see um, a doctor to help us figure out why um, it was taking so long. At that point, I think we had been trying for like a year and a half, more than a year and a half probably, um, because we're more than three years into this. So anyways, I want to tell you what all has went on from last April to now. Um, I do have all sorts of videos updating you like every month what has been going on, but I feel like I need to put everything into one video in case people don't want to watch all of those. And I've had um, a couple people ask me to do this, so I thought I'd go ahead and do it. I hope that I don't forget anything, um, but there are a bunch of videos you can watch if you want to see um, more details. I'm just going to do like vague um, recalls of what all has happened. So basically, I went and had my annual... Um, pap test done and they just go through like their normal questions um, she asked me if I had any kids I said no she said do you want any I said yeah and then she asked how long we have been trying and I said um, over a year and she said oh uh, well then I want to set you up with somebody to um, get some further information and see why you haven't gotten pregnant yet I didn't really think anything of it but um, I think like a week later or something, we met with just um, an OBGYN and our first appointment, Carla and I both went and she just got some basic information from the both of us, um, like medical history, um, how long we had been trying, if, um, you know, I told her I was a diabetic. Um, then she just kind of told us what all would happen through the next couple months, like the um, different procedures and things that we could go through. And um, I felt really good about it. So that was just getting our history and everything. You don't do anything that first visit, at least with my doctors, I didn't. So we had our follow-up appointment and I got blood work done. And it showed that I was not ovulating. So I can't remember how exactly this went, but I had to get blood work done and then Carlo had to have um, blood work done as well and a semen analysis done. I don't know, I don't remember who got what done first, but anyway, we found out that I did not ovulate, so that was the problem. And then we found out that Carlo's um, sperm count was very, very low. I think the normal is like 40 million. It's like the normal um, what they want to see for people if you're trying to get pregnant. Um, and his was, I think, 8 million. So it was super, super low. Um, his hormone levels were fine. But she um, had immediately said, you know, you're going to have to be put on medicine to increase your sperm count. He got sent to a urologist. And um, he right away put him on Clomid. He was taking it, I think, three days a week. And then every so many weeks, he had to go back and have another semen analysis done to make sure um, the medicine was working. And it, it was working, but very, very slowly. So he had to up the medicine. He was taking it. Um, then he started taking it Monday through Friday, and that's how he's been taking it. He takes 50 milligrams Monday through Friday. He's been doing that for months and months. Um, so basically, that's all that happened with him. He keeps going back, I think, every six months to have another semen analysis done, but that's basically that. Oh, and also um, the urologist asked, there was like a questionnaire he had to fill out and one was, does he snore and does he wake himself up or fall asleep throughout the day, anything like that. Um, I knew he probably had sleep apnea because his snoring is out of this world and he would like wake me up with a snoring and I would like wouldn't be able to fall back asleep and I could hear him like stop breathing and then he would like like snore and like wake himself up like because he stopped breathing 
So um, the doctor explained if he had sleep apnea, then that would more than likely be the cause of his sperm count to be so low. So he had a sleep study done. He had to spend the night in a hospital. They hooked him up to a bunch of monitors and he stayed there overnight and he did have sleep apnea. So now he wears a CPAP to bed at night. So they said that he stopped breathing like 20 times an hour, like something ridiculous. So that's scary. So thank goodness we got him tested. So anyway, right now his sperm count is I can't remember what it is, but it's it's normal now. So he's just always going to be on this medicine until I get pregnant and then then he can stop taking it. But so that's basically what has went on with him. Um so back to me, I had my blood work done. They told me I was not ovulating. Um and they wanted to find out why. So I had an HSG test done, which I have a whole video on that. Um I had to go into the hospital. It was a procedure in the hospital where they shoot dye through your fallopian tubes and watch it on a monitor and take a bunch of pictures to make sure that your tubes, excuse me, to make sure that your tubes aren't blocked. That procedure was so painful. I, if it would have been a couple of seconds longer, I think I would have passed out. It was so painful. Um, if you want to know more about it, definitely watch my video because I go into detail about it, but uh, it was very painful and I never want to have that done again. But I had it done and it showed I didn't have any blockages. So for whatever reason, I don't ovulate on my own. Um, so then I would be put on Clomid. But the thing is, I couldn't be put on Clomid until Carlos' sperm count was normal, which took six months. So basically, we just waited for six months and didn't did nothing. I couldn't be put on the Clomid, so we just did nothing. So six months later, his sperm count is up to where it um, was okay for me to start taking the Clomid. So I started taking it, um, I think I had to take it either for three or five days, certain days of your cycle, and the doctor will tell you when to take it. Um, I think I took it for three days, but I can't, I honestly can't remember. It's been so long since I've been on it. Um, but my doctor originally told me that she would only have me do that for, I think like four, four or five months. And then after that, more than likely it wasn't, I, if it wasn't pregnant by then, it wasn't going to help. So I did it for four months and every time, this is the most frustrating thing is, they keep telling you something different. Um, I think it went from, originally she told me I was only going to take it for three months. Then I got told, no, I could do it for five months. And then I got told, no, you can take it for seven months. Well, I took it for four and then I was fed up. So I called in and I asked her if I could just be sent to a fertility specialist because she was just an OBGYN. And she said all she could do is give me the Clomid and if it didn't work, she'd have to send me somewhere else anyway. So I just said, you know, I've done four months of this. I haven't gotten pregnant. So could I go to a specialist? She said, no problem. Um, so she referred us to a specialist in Pittsburgh, which is an hour and a half from our house. And we didn't realize how often we were going to have to go to the office but it is a lot. Um, and the appointments are not scheduled. Like you don't schedule an appointment, say you go in on a Monday and they want to see you like to make a follow-up appointment and you pick the day. That's not how it works. Um, it is certain days you have to go based on your cycle. So, um, and I'll get into this, but like like cycle day three, you have to go. Cycle day 10, you have to go. Then you have to go back for the actual procedure and it's so frustrating and I didn't know any of this no one explained it to me um so I just want to like let everyone know how it really is it's very frustrating especially if you live far away it just it didn't bother us at first but um I was working 3 to 11 at the time so I had to make the appointments in the morning while Carlo works in the morning so he would always have to take off because I didn't want to drive by myself um so it was frustrating you know that he'd have to take a day off of work like twice a week to take me down there and it just got it's so annoying 
and especially when the visits are so short. So just know that it will be very frustrating if you live far away from your clinic because you will have to go there quite often. So um, anyways, back to, <laughs> we got the appointment with our fertility specialist. We just had, um, just like we did with the OB, we sat down, he got information. Um, I had to bring my HSG results. It was in a CD I got from the hospital so he could watch it um, and make sure he didn't see anything on there because he said if he saw something, then he would make me have, it would make me do it again. And I was like, oh my gosh, please don't see anything because I don't want to have to go through that again. That was so painful. But so I had to give him that. He just got our medical history. Um, we told him, you know, that we were both on the Clomid, how long, and he wanted to see, he wanted, um, semen analysis done so we brought that paperwork and then he basically told us that he was going to switch my medicine to Femera which is letrozole um it does this, basically the same thing as the Clomid it just helps you ovulate and obviously I don't do it on my own so I have to be on something so he changed that and then he said our best bet would be IUIs which is um intrauterine insemination and you know, like we were so excited. We left the office feeling great. He gave us so much hope. He said, you know, um, Carlos stuff looks good. My stuff looks good. Now everything looks fine. We're going to do the IUIs and you'll get pregnant. It shouldn't be a problem. And we just were like so hopeful. He originally told us we would only be able to do three IUIs and then we'd have to move on to IVF. That kept changing too, which is very frustrating. I wish they would not tell you that either stick to what you're originally telling me or don't give me like you you can only have this many done because that is so annoying to me um so originally he told us we could do three I didn't know exactly how an IUI would go so I watched a bunch of videos um the first one I had done oh back up before we even get into that so um, I was on the Femera. We had, I had to get blood work done to make sure I was ovulating on that type of medicine, which he had me do at my local hospital, thank goodness. Um, and I just had to bring him those results. So it showed that I was ovulating with that. So we went ahead and scheduled the IUI. Um, and he also, I don't think he told us what all we had to do with the IUI. He just kind of explained the procedure, but when you have an IUI done, you call in the first day of your period, which is so annoying because everything is based off of your cycle. So I think I was like halfway through my cycle. So I had to wait two weeks before even starting the IUI process, which was so annoying. You, the waiting game is insane. You you wait so much, so much. And I'm a very impatient person. So it was such a struggle for me. But... um. Yeah, so I called the first day of my period. Um, so on day three, you have a baseline ultrasound done, and they just go in. It's not an ultrasound with the gel on your stomach. It's the internal ultrasounds, which is uncomfortable. And sorry if this is TMI, but I wasn't even thinking. They actually didn't even tell me that it was going to be an internal ultrasound. So I just assumed it was going to be the you know, the gel in my stomach, like a normal ultrasound would be. Um, and I went and sat down on the table and noticed the wand and that it was going to be an internal ultrasound. And if you think you're going in on day three, more than likely you're still bleeding. So the whole thing is just so disgusting. I'm sorry if this is TMI, but the whole thing is just so, it's uncomfortable. It's just gross. It's gross. I, why would you have an ultrasound done when you're on your period? I just think it's so it's so disgusting. But you need to know this information because no one told me about this. So, day three, internal ultrasound. That's all you have done. They don't tell you anything. You leave the office. At least this is just my journey. This is what is happening at my fertility clinic. I don't, it could be different other places, but this is what's happening for me. So, we drove an hour and a half for a two-minute ultrasound. 
Um, so we go home. They called me in like two hours, told me that everything looked fine and I needed to schedule my day 10 ultrasound. Basically the baseline ultrasound, they're just looking for cysts. And if you have cysts, they have to get rid of them before you can start on, um, the IUI medicine. So, um, I didn't have any cysts. I scheduled my day 10 ultrasound. You have another internal ultrasound and you have blood work done. Um, just to see where you are in your cycle if you're going to ovulate soon because they base that information off of your medication, when to start your medication and um, how much you'll be taking. So, um, yeah, so I scheduled that. And in the meantime, you start your Femera, if that's what you're going to be put on. That's Those are the pills to help you ovulate. So after... Um, I hope I'm explaining this okay. It's just there's so much information and I, I hope I'm not confusing anybody. But So you take the Femera days three through seven. So um, day three is your your first ultrasound. So that, that evening you start your pills. You take them day three through day seven. After they tell you the results of your first ultrasound, they'll also give you a paper when you're supposed to take what medicine. So you start your... You do the Femera three through seven, and then you do the um, fall. You you might have an option of what to take. I took the fall stem because that's what my insurance would pay more for, so I I got the fall stem. You take the fall stem day seven, eight, and nine um, in the evening. I would take mine about ten o'clock at night. Um, so then. Day 10 is when you have your second ultrasound and your blood work, and that is to determine if you're about to ovulate. And it, the ultrasound will um, be able to tell you how big your follicles are, and they're supposed to be between like 21 to 24 millimeters. And if they are, then that's good. They'll go ahead and set you up for your IUI. If not, you'll have to take more injections, which my first time around, I didn't have to. Um, I had my IUI done, I think, four days later, um, and everything was fine. The actual actual IUI, um, we just went into like a regular, um, like where we had our appointments. It had a bed, um, a table and chairs and a sink. And it's just like a regular waiting room, like when you wait for the doctor. So um, they, you have to fill out all this paperwork, of course. Okay, I just had to go pick my cat up at the vet, so... <laughs> I'm trying to think of where I left off. I think I pretty much told you everything. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to film this um, because I watched videos on like the procedures and stuff, but like no one really talks about the stuff like in between. And there's a lot of it. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of you have to call your... Um, and health insurance company to see what they'll cover. Um, you have to pay for your medicine before you get it. Um, you have to... Oh, I didn't even mention. Um, so, the injections. You... First, you'll take the... Um, you'll take just three of them. You take them um, day seven, eight, and nine in the evening. Um, and then your second ultrasound and your blood work will determine if you need more injections or not. And if you don't, then they will tell you when to take your trigger shot. I didn't mention that. Um, you have to pay for the trigger shot too, which um, is just a pre-filled syringe. And basically what it does is it's just um, a big dose of the pregnancy hormone to trick your body into ovulating. You take that um, say my IUI is scheduled for Monday morning, then I will take the trigger shot Saturday night at 10 o'clock, and it has to be at a specific time. Um, so yeah, everything is based off of the previous information. So you never know when your appointments are going to be until you have I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean? Like you have your appointment. That determines your next appointment, which determines your next appointment. So you can't plan ahead. And I started working um, 
I would work like half daylight and half evening shift. So I always had to figure out if it fell on a day that I worked the morning shift, then I had to switch somebody quickly. I had like a day to switch somebody shifts. Um, that's one thing I didn't, I don't like about this, the appointments is you, you can't plan for them. You don't know when they're going to be, or if you're going to have to go back for extra, because a couple times I had to go back for extra ultrasounds and extra blood work. And it was, it's just so time consuming. And it literally takes up your whole life. Like from, you know, day one of your cycle starting until the last day of your cycle, it's constant. You're taking pills, then you're taking shots, you're going to get ultrasounds, then you're getting blood work, then you're having the procedure done. Then you're waiting two weeks to take a pregnancy test to determine if it worked or not. And if it didn't, then you get your period like three days later and then you start the process again. So it is constant and you never get a break. And when you get to the point that you're so frustrated and you start bawling at your appointment, you need to take a break. And that's the point that I'm at right now. Um, I bawled the minute I walked into the office to the minute that I left the office. I was a mess. Um, emotionally, I was just tapped out. I couldn't handle anymore. I was so frustrated. I wanted to scream and cry and kick and, um, it, yeah. So I'm at the point that I need a break. And so we're taking a two month break <laughs> and I'm, we're focusing on other things. So I feel very good about it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that went on through this past year and a half. It's actually flown by, but we've like done a lot of crap in a year and a half. And it really sucks. Like I wish I could have looked. I wish I could like look ahead because that's the worst thing of doing all this stuff and not knowing. Because I'm always like, oh, okay. Um, everything looks like it's going to work out. So, um... Like, this time, I was going to find out a week before Carlo's birthday, and I was really hoping, um, like, for his birthday, I could tell him, you know, you're your dad. <laughs> but it did not work out that way. <laughs> and, it like, the mind games that it plays with you is insane. Like, you will literally drive yourself insane. I, it's just constant. Any little bit of, like, oh, I'm nauseous, that's weird, or, um, I, I haven't had cramps, and I should have had cramps by now, so obviously my period's not coming, like, it's just insane what, it, what happens with your mind, and, like, your body plays tricks on you, I swear, and that's, a, like, honestly the most frustrating thing, and, like, the waiting game, it's terrible. I just really wish I would have known before all of this, like, just, it's not just, oh, let me take a pill and then I'm going to have an IUI done. Like, it's, there's so much more in between that, like, I feel like no one ever says what it's like. And even I don't, I didn't, like, put all of that into videos. I didn't show you all of it. I, um, I showed you most of it, but some of the other stuff that went on is just, it's just crazy, but yeah, we just need a break. So <laughs> hopefully I, um, everything I wanted to say, I said, if I forgot anything, um, I'll put it down in the description box. If you guys have any questions, if I said something that was confusing or you just want to know some more information, then please leave me a message, um, down below, or you can message me on Instagram. Um, yeah, I have no problem answering any questions. If I missed something, if something seemed confusing, or if I um, messed something up, I don't know. I There was a lot to talk about. So hopefully you all enjoyed this. And um, yeah, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I would love to have you. And yeah, until my next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye.